This case is all so many of my friends have been talking about. I don't know about you, but uh, it's incredible to me. With two mass shootings, with inflation at record levels, the buzz online, not to mention in our little Jersey Shore Beach town last weekend, was all about this couple's failed marriage because we are obsessed with celebrity in this culture and lifestyles of the rich and famous. We love salacious trials, especially of beautiful people with interesting, to put it kindly, lives. <laughs> and the truth is there are other agendas at play here as well. The death of the Me Too movement, the return of men's rights, maybe, maybe. Almost to a person, my friends are Team Depp, and they have come to absolutely loathe Amber Heard. I mean, loathe. You remember Mark Garrigo saying women are particularly hard on other women? Oh, has that been true in my own personal observations? She is diabolical, said one of my pals. She is a person who thinks nothing of destroying another human being for personal gain, said another. I could go on. Everyone's got an opinion on this case. And that is okay, because these two put it out there. They invited us into their sick, warped world of drugs, toxicity, destruction, lies, insults, disgusting personal hygiene, crapping on their staff, desperate insecurity, and abject cruelty. Elon Musk tweeted last week, at their best, they are each incredible. Really? Based on what we heard at trial, at least one of them is actually a sick, twisted, pathetically sad abuser. <laughs> but which one? This case really is a true he said, she said. They can't both be telling the truth here. Either he physically abused her, perhaps as many as a dozen times as she claims, or he didn't. Depp's team suggesting Amber was the only witness the jury heard from supporting her abuse allegations. But the truth is, no, they've misstated her claim. Her sister claimed to have witnessed the abuse on the stand under oath. Her makeup artist claimed to have covered up bruises many times. Friends claimed to have heard out of control arguments that led to them getting police involved in, in a desperate Amber scared on the other line. And one friend testified that she personally photographed her injuries, a split lip, a swollen face, hair, a big clump of blonde hair pulled out and still sitting on the floor uh, in their apartment, allegedly at Johnny Depp's hand. Not to mention the marital therapist who testified that this relationship was mutually abusive. Amber produced those photographs, all of which Johnny Depp challenged with expert testimony, suggesting they had been doctored or pointing to other photos Depp's team did taken after these alleged beatings, featuring a glowing picture perfect herd. Her sister, while well, she's blood, the makeup artist never saw what caused the injuries and so on. The jury was given a lot to think about conflicting claims on each one of these pieces of evidence. My own take on it is this. There's plenty of evidence to support Amber's claim that she was abused. Sexually abused? Less so. Amber Heard introduced reams of proof on tape and through witnesses to establish some form of abuse took place. I mentioned their joint marital therapist. She was actually Johnny Depp's witness. And here's what she said. There was violence between from Mr. Depp toward Amber, correct? Yes, you're right. And then with Ms. Ms. Heard, he was triggered and um, they engaged in what I saw as mutual abuse. Well, you heard her. There was violence perpetrated by him on her. That's Johnny's witness, who was their joint marital therapist. OK, so there is evidence in the record from which this jury could conclude he abused her. That has nothing to do with Amber's on-stand testimonial. There are tapes of him insulting her, berating her, destroying property around her. That's abuse. It's not the exact physical or sexual, sexual abuse that she claims took place, not on tape, but it's certainly enough to justify at least two of the three statements that he's now suing her over, which appeared in a first-person Amber Heard op-ed in the Washington Post in 2018, declaring that she had faced domestic abuse. Now, interestingly, on Tuesday, the jury had a question about that op-ed and the verdict form, potentially very telling. Their question focused on the first of three statements from Heard's op-ed that Depp now claims were defamatory. The statement they asked about was the headline 
of that piece. Quote, Amber Heard, colon, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change, end quote. The jury is asked on the verdict forum if they believe this statement is false, a prerequisite to finding that it is defamatory. Truth is an absolute defense to any defamation claim. If it's true, there's no claim. They wanted to know if they were being asked if just the headline was false or if the entire op-ed was false. The judge told them on this particular question, the only issue was whether the headline was false. There are two other questions that get to Heard's more general claims about being, quote, a public figure representing domestic abuse. Now, it's always dicey to try to read jury questions since we have no idea what's going through their heads and you can easily get embarrassed on this. But I'll go out on a limb and say this is a bad sign for Ms. Heard. If the jury believed her entire op-ed, headline and body together, why would they send out this question? If they believe she was a victim of sexual violence, as the headline says, and of domestic abuse more broadly, as the body of the op-ed claims, why would they need to draw a distinction between the two? Why wouldn't they just check uh, check the boxes? No, this headline was not false. No, neither was the body of her piece. It seems to me they have doubts, at least about her sexual violence claims. Not ideal for her. As for her counterclaim, it's not going anywhere. Her lawyer's statement and closing argument that her didn't even really want the 100 million she's countersuing for spoke volumes. She basically just gave the jury permission to let it slip away. We didn't mean it. We're not really here for the money. We're here to make his case go away so Amber can, quote, get her life back. Whatever happens legally, there is zero doubt that this case was a PR win for Johnny Depp. He had been painted as a wife beater by a media that rushed to canonize Amber Heard. He lost business, so he said, his reputation, certainly, and was publicly humiliated. And at a minimum, we now know that Amber Heard, while painting herself as a victim, failed to tell the Washington Post and the rest of us the whole story, her hand in it, her own behavior. And it's tough to deny that Johnny Depp benefited by bringing it all out into the open. I believe Amber was abused by Johnny Depp. I believe Johnny Depp was abused by her, too. I watched her testimony, and some of it rang true to me. But I also observed her tell many obvious lies while under oath. So many, in fact, that if I were a juror, I could not rule in her favor. Just a few examples, and these are my opinion. She lied when she told the UK court that she had donated the seven million divorce settlement he gave her to charity. Depp's lawyers did an admirable job of exposing that, and Amber Heard was visibly uncomfortable on the stand when she tried to suggest that a pledge to donate was the same thing as donating. What did you do with that money? Seven million dollars in total was donated to, I split it between the ACLU and Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. As of today, you have not paid $3.5 $3.5 million of your own money to the ACLU. Yes or no? I have not yet. And as of today, you have not paid $3.5 million of your own money to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles, correct? I have not yet. Johnny sued me. She lied when she said her Washington Post op ed wasn't about Johnny Depp. That was a joke. It was obviously untrue. Later at trial, Heard inadvertently admitted it, exposing her own earlier duplicity. The only one who made it about him, ironically, is Johnny. I know how many people will come out and say whatever for him. That's his power. That's why I wrote the op-ed. Oh, really? (laughs) Wait, I thought it wasn't about him. Uh, She lied when she denied that she or her friend had defecated in her marital bed the night of her 30th birthday. After she and Depp argued and he left for another home, the chauffeur Starling Jenkins testified that Heard admitted it to him at the time. Moreover, the feces, which we've seen now in pictures, was obviously not from a four pound Yorkie, as Heard preposterously claimed. Did you commit any kind of prank? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I don't think that's funny, period. That's disgusting. We had a conversation pertaining to the surprise she left in the boss's bed prior to leaving the apartment. 
And when you refer to the surprise in the boss's bed, what are you referring to? The defecation. And what did Ms. Hurd say about the defecation in Mr. Depp's bed? A horrible practical jerk gone wrong. She misled the jury when she suggested that Johnny Depp had thrown his ex-girlfriend, Kate Moss, down the stairs during their relationship, an accusation she gratuitously threw into her own story about a fight she had with Depp atop the stairs, one that came back to bite her in a sensational way. Watch. And Johnny swings at her, and I don't even wait, don't even wait for any other, I don't hesitate, I don't wait, I just in my head instantly think of Kate Moss and the stairs, and I swung at him. Did Mr. Depp push you in any way down the stairs? No. Uh, During the course of your relationship, did he ever push you down any stairs? No, he never pushed me, kicked me, or threw me down any stairs. But the biggest and most telling lie of all, the one I would have devoted much of my own closing to, was her claim that she did not leak the video of Depp attacking cabinets to TMZ and that neither she nor her team alerted TMZ to her court filing in 2016 seeking a restraining order against Mr. Depp. This was the death knell to her credibility. And here is how I would have argued it had I been Depp's counsel. Members of the jury, I would have said, there's a jury instruction often used in the law. It's Latin. Falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. And what that means is that if you find Ms. Heard lied to you during this trial about one thing, you are within your rights to conclude she lied to you about everything. And she did lie to you about so many things. But here, let's take just one. Let's take this one thing. And let me ask you if she's a liar. May 27th, 2016, the day she filed for her restraining order. On that day, someone called TMZ and told them she would be there at the courthouse told them exactly where and when and what poses they could expect from her. Maybe it was Johnny, she actually suggested on the stand. She had given him a heads up about the filing, she claimed. So he knew that she would be there. Johnny Depp. He called the tabloid press to alert them to the fact that his wife was about to publicly call him an abuser. He thought press coverage of that event might be, what, helpful to his career? And what about the pose? to show off the alleged bruise that was promised to TMZ. Do you believe that Johnny Depp viciously attacked his wife, bruising her face, then called TMZ to photograph her injuries, promising them that she would pose just right so that they could document it to their millions of viewers? Or is it more likely that Amber Heard, who went to the courthouse that day with her publicist and for the first time ever without makeup, saw an opportunity to land a blow in the PR war. And then she had the nerve to look you in the eye. She was very good about trying to make you feel connected to her, wasn't she? She looked you in the eye and she tried to tell you that neither she nor her team had anything to do with that. Does anyone believe that? And why would she lie? Because she doesn't want you to know she's a manipulator. She makes things up to make herself look sympathetic. And then she had the nerve to blame that, too, on Mr. Depp. This is the same woman who told you that neither she nor her team leaked the video to TMZ of Depp going after those cabinets. A tape taken on her phone by her, to which TMZ now mysteriously owns the copyright. How did that happen? Who could have given it to them? You heard Morgan Tremaine testify he's from TMZ, that they posted that video within 15 minutes of getting it and that they would not have done that unless it came directly from the source of the video. He meant Amber Heard. That's where they clearly got it. That's why they have the copyright. That's why they were able to publish it within moments of receiving it. And that is why the end of that video, which you saw here in this courtroom, where Amber mocks Mr. Depp, is cut out of what aired on TMZ. Here is what was shown in court. Nothing happened this morning, you know that? Were you in here 
No. So that nothing happened to you this morning. Yeah, you're right. I just woke up and you were so sweet and nice. We were not even fighting this morning. All I did was say sorry. Did something happen to you this morning? I don't think so. Um, no, that's the thing. You want to see crazy? I'll give you fucking crazy. That's crazy. Oh, you're crazy. Are you crazy? Yeah, have you drunk this whole thing this morning? Oh, you got this. Going. You got this going. Just started it. Oh, really? Yes. Really. That shit on me? No, nope. I didn't. You were smashing shit. Oh, bye. <laughs> she was in control of what she sent to TMZ. The one in this courtroom, she had to produce the entire thing. Even that last part where she was kind of smirking might have made her look a little bad. And once again, she lied about it. She looked the jury in the eye and said, absolutely not. I wouldn't have leaked that. Not me, not my team. Because lying comes easy to Amber Heard. And so while you may struggle with whether to believe her claims of abuse, not one of which is documented on her infamous videos, not one of which is backed up by her even saying on the tapes she loved so much to record, Johnny, you've hit me many times. Johnny, you've abused me. Johnny, why do you hit me so often? That's not on there. While you may nonetheless still say, I think he did something to her, she is not credible enough for you to find that it is more probable than not that he did. She has destroyed her own credibility and her own case with her lies about critical facts, falsus in uno, falsus in omnibus. Amber Heard is a liar. That's what I would have argued. And it's a shame in a way. It's a shame. She's undermined her own substantive claims of abuse with her perfidy. She's made it harder for other women bringing these claims to prevail because this trial is so public and the skepticism it generated will come back to haunt someone with less power and less privilege. And it was unnecessary. She could have owned all of these things and admitted to doing dumb things and fighting the PR war in the only way her team knew how but said, look, none of that changes what he did to me. The fact that she couldn't own any part of it is telling, and it's disturbing, and it's a definite red flag. Finally, a word in her defense. Johnny Depp's star power is the third party in this case. He has used it deftly from the start to the finish. And he has the courtroom and even the nation in the palm of his hand right now. He is a megawatt A-list star of the first order, and he's asking us to like him. He's coming almost on bended knee, asking us to believe him, to trust him, to understand and empathize with him. It's very rare for a celebrity of that magnitude to be so open about their childhood trauma, their marital drama, and so on. Celebrity remains intoxicating to most Americans. It's having a powerful effect on many here. And you can see it in the throngs of fans who wait for him each day and who hashtag for him online. Yes, she's famous too, but she's not even close to in his league. And it worries me because he's also very rich. He's hired nine lawyers from a great firm to go after her. He has a great PR team too. She fired hers mid-trial and for good reason. And it hasn't been lost on me that most women would be totally outmatched by this kind of money, power, fame, and influence on the other side of the courtroom. She's uptight. He's loose. She's torqued. He's collegial. He cracks jokes. She's not really in a joking mood. He is winning the likability battle, which can be tough for women, especially beautiful, rich ones like Amber. And yet this is not a likability contest. It's not supposed to be. Nor is this supposed to be about the Me Too movement writ large. Some people see it that way, celebrate it that way. But this is about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Not you and the bullshit claim lodged against you. Not Brett Kavanaugh and the bullshit claims lodged against him. Johnny and Amber. And on that front, a few points. 
Believe all women in and always is and always has been a load of crap. But the truth is that most women, and the studies show this, do not actually lie about abuse. Most, most do tell the truth, even though doing so is incredibly hard. Not all, but most. Nor does the absence of other women lining up against Johnny Depp mean he is not an abuser of Amber Heard. An abuser can start later in life and can start with just one woman. His own marital therapist seemed to suggest that's what happened here. He controlled himself for 20 to 30 years, she said, but she triggered him. That's his witness. That he may not have done this to anyone else does not mean he didn't do it to Amber Heard. You may have a son you want vindicated like Johnny Depp wants to be. You may have a daughter who is far from a perfect victim like Miss Heard, but you weren't there. I wasn't there. This case does not mean something did or did not happen to you or someone you love unfairly. This is about a terrible, toxic marriage that never should have happened in a world, Hollywood, that promises the moon and more often than not delivers drug addiction, insecurity, sadness, rejection, emptiness, meaninglessness, and a valueless life. Look at these two and then hug your spouse your children. Remember that a life of value is about respect, honor, love for yourself and those you hold dear. Not fame, not drugs, not booze, not red carpets, not five penthouses filled with feces and so-called friends you barely know. That truth, more than any other, may be the biggest takeaway of this entire mess. Are the high fuel costs putting a damper on your summer vacation plans? From higher prices at the pump to a jump in airfare, it's getting more expensive to get away for a week. And the surveys show the vast majority of Americans are worried about this. But what if you could soak up those vacation vibes without even having to leave your property? You can. Get a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. Whether you want to stay close to home this summer or you just want to extend your break, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas can transform your backyard into an oasis. It's an oasis. It's a gym. It's a spa. It's a source of fun. It combines all the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It's going to reinvent family time. You will love it. Your family and friends will too. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard even if it's a small backyard. And since it's heated, you can use it year-round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save a 1000 bucks on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or 500 bucks on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.